Welcome to Expressions and Formulas in Algebra 2. Uh, today we're going to cover order of operations, how to solve algebraic expressions, and formulas. Okay, uh, we do have some examples here. Uh, let's start off with order of operations. Order of operations is parentheses or brackets, exponents, you have a variable or number to an exponent, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Please remember when solving multiplication and division, you're going to move left to right. And when solving addition and subtraction, you're going to move left to right. So I look over example number one. Do I have parentheses? No, I do not. Do I have exponents? Yes, I do. So that's what I'm going to solve first. Rewriting my entire problem, solving what is highlighted. 8 squared means 8 times 8, or 64, and rewriting the rest of my problem. If you try and jump the gun on this, you could solve something wrong. Now I'm going to solve any multiplication and division going left to right. I'm first going to solve 64 divided by 4 since that comes first or that comes before 4 times 3. So it's 5 plus and then times 3. I still have multiplication left so I'm going to solve that first as 16 times 3 so I'm rewriting my problem. It's 48. And then I can go ahead and solve my addition, which is what I have left. 48 plus 5 is 53. And then circle my answer so I know which one's my answer. The next one, I have brackets, parentheses, exponents. I have a little bit of everything, don't I? Okay, so what I need to do is I need to take a look inside my brackets, since I have brackets. I'm going to take a look inside here first. And I'm going to ask myself, starting with P for parentheses, do I have any parentheses? Yes, I do. So I'm going to rewrite my bracket. Inside my parentheses is 4 plus 8, or 12. Don't forget the squared, divided by 9. The reason you write everything down is so you don't forget anything. Now I go to E, or exponents. 12 squared, which means 12 times 12, or 144, and then divided by 9, times 5, solving one thing at a time so I don't make any mistakes. 144 divided by 9 is 16 times no. times 5. And then I can go ahead and multiply 16 times 5. And 16 times 5 is 80. And you're done. Let's go on to another example. Here, I'm, before I even read the problem, just let you know when you're evaluating expressions, the rest of your life, you're going to use PEMDAS. Even I like to write down PEMDAS as a reminder. Everyone needs reminders. Okay, it says evaluate 4x squared plus x plus 3 times x times y if x equals negative 3 and y equals 5. And this is something I'm, I'm about to tell you. I've seen my students make that this mistake over and over again. You're saying, well, this is a simple problem. It is a simple problem, but notice the negative 3. Okay? Anytime I substitute numbers in for variables, I'm always going to put it inside the parentheses because students will get it wrong because of that negative. It's not because they don't know how to solve it. It's because they misread the negative. Let's go ahead and rewrite the problem. 4 
times x is negative 3 squared plus 3 times negative 3 times, and my y is 5. Now I'm going to go back to using order of operations. In order of operations, I have parentheses first. Uh, there's only one number inside the parentheses, so I'm going to move on to in all these parentheses, so I'm going to move on to exponents. I more or less use the parentheses as multiplication. So I'm going to solve the exponent first. Rewriting my problem, starting from the left, 4 times negative 3 squared. And this is what I'm talking about, people making a mistake. Negative 3 squared really means negative 3 times negative 3 which is going to give you a positive answer because of the two negatives. So negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. I'm going to rewrite my whole problem. Because following order of operations is so important. Now I'm going to do any multiplication division moving left to right. So I come across 4 times 9. I'm going to solve 4 times 9 first, and 4 times 9 is 36, rewriting my whole problem. And then I'm going to come across 3 times negative 3 times 5. Right now I have 3 times negative 3 times 5. And it's important to remember this negative because with only one negative and multiplying, that creates a negative 9. Bring down my 5. A negative 9 times 5 is a negative 45. So I'm going to rewrite my problem. 36. And since that's a negative 5, I can say minus 45 or I can say plus a negative 45. And 36 plus a negative 45 is going to equal a negative 9. 